good afternoon, and thank you for attending the last session of the day. I, I, when I came in the room, Blaine had they cleared the house. Everybody left. We had literally zero people in here. Anyhow, thanks again for attending. I take it you were captivated by the title, if not the description. And uh, I don't want to say this is the last minute uh, put together, but uh, there was a second email, as some of you know, that came out looking for presenters. And I ran this across uh, James and Pierre, and they said, absolutely. And I think uh, Deborah Boisvert would uh, concur to this. We'd like to share our best practices and some of the things that we're doing at the College of Southern Nevada. My name is Warren Kiyoki. And uh, I'm the director for Advanced Applied Technology School uh, at CSN, College of Southern Nevada, located in Las Vegas. We've got three major campuses, and uh, most people don't realize it, but we're the fourth or fifth largest community college in the United States. And I play a very, very minute role. And I worked uh, for Deborah for three years as a co PI. And I just got so busy. But uh, out of that came some great, great stuff uh, that certainly Deborah can attest to. And a few others this morning, a key keynote speaker as well, Brenda Wilkerson. Anyhow, you can see the title here, An Effective and Alternative Way of Connecting Your ICT Students with Local Employers. Every year I attend MPIT, there is such valuable information. I wish I can go to all the workshops. But one of the things that I did is handed you a blank piece of paper, and I'd like for you to just jot, spend a minute jotting some ideas down on how you connect your ICT students with the, the very people at hire. Okay, we're handing out some blank paper to have all of you jot down how, how is it that you, your colleagues, your department, your institution connects your students with your local business and industry partners for jobs, full-time, part-time, internships, shadowing, and so forth. And let's take about 60 seconds. Wayne. This is for me, right? Sure. <laughs> yeah, no. For those of you that just walked in, we're spending about 60 seconds writing down how do you connect how you connect your business and industry partners to the very people that hire students with your students. Internships, word of mouth, some ideas, job fairs, one-on-one -on -one recommendations, job postings. Those are some examples. I may be missing something. As I found from Baytech, I missed something significant, hence the title here. We don't have any markers here. Oh. Anybody have to drive markers? Yeah. Okay. What are what are your ideas? We're going through uh, temp agencies. Uh, we, we actually have a lot of arrangements with the uh, temporary agencies, and those tend to be really good uh, entry levels. Uh, temp agencies, uh -huh. particularly for entry level. More next week. Okay, Deborah, do you have any ideas? She's writing for you. <laughs> I've had um, industry partners and sometimes advisory board members. Um, I've invited them to class 
Okay. Fabulous. Yeah. Um, I went to the Belgian CEO of a um, headhunting company, mm -hmm. um, come in and teach my IT students how to shake hands, how to look somebody in the eye. And then he came back after we talked about writing resumes, and he individually, one by one, went over resumes and tried to repeat her up. So that he kind of had his own job experience in some way. Or whatever it was. And sometimes it's like a positive job to trust you in this and that kind of thing. And so we're going to get some soft skills with him. It was the best time of my life. This was when he was there. Okay, advisory boards, the importance of handshake, eye contact, and people skills. Uh, somebody also mentioned temporary agencies. Great idea. Doing industry events at, at a school where students can be invited, or uh, doing conferences where students will get um, will get free free admission. Conferences on campus. Mm -hmm. Getting students at the conference. Well, these are all including the students, you have to, or that was the original question, is how do you connect the people that hire your students with the you employers? The students who are not employed, they are, they are usually able to resource and they come back to us whenever they want it. Former students that are employed? Our, employees, our, our connection is here. We bring in an industry partner and they do mock interviews with our students. Students are um, completely outfitted, dressed up very professionally for the mock interview. So, so for the mock interview, they're, they're trained beforehand. Yeah. To what extent, I'm not sure. In our class, we include professional development and life skills and soft skills in our class. So they've had um, a lot of practice before the mock. One comment to that. And I just heard recently that that was a great idea is take the students' smartphones and record them on their smartphones. And I just heard this recently, oh, what a great idea, because now they have a copy of them interviewing. So I just want to share that. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, I think that's a. I'm just sharing. And then keep the smartphone. <laughs> record. Selfie video. Selfie video, yeah, basically. Smartphone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is a fabulous idea. People will clam up by nature uh, when they know that they're being video recorded, audio video recorded. So these all include your students. Any others? In other words, somebody gives you a call and says, hey, we're looking for, or. One on one with personal partners, you know an advisor, you know people that you've worked with over the years. It could be adjunct professors, they could be donors, uh, they could be advisors. Somebody mentioned the first one was advisory boards. You've got a connection, they call you. What's your name? Jack. Hey, Jack, I need somebody in service and support with at least one year of IT, ICT experience. Can you help me out? I don't want anybody. I don't want it posted. I want a, I want a recommendation. And so that's another way that you can connect your students. Well, what is speed networking? Uh, it's likened to speed dating. If you Google YouTube video clips on speed dating alone, I think you'll find 10,000, I did this again last night, 10,600 results. Do's and don'ts of speed dating. Speed dating for dummies. Questions that you must ask during speed dating. Well, why not apply this to speed networking? Uh, speed networking, high intensity, just like speed dating, lightning round, meet and greet method of connecting 
employers with students. In addition to what we've got here, and I'm sure that there are more if we spend more time, internship opportunities, full and part-time jobs, interview preparedness and practice, get out there. A lot of your students, especially the younger ones, have never had the opportunity to interview anybody in the ICT industry. And so they're getting the skills, and you've got to put the criteria on this as well, resume writing, and much, much more. We hosted a speed networking event at the College of Southern Nevada, the first one that we ever held as a result of what I'm going to show you in a bit here. And it was held during a Friday, the last day of spring break. It was pros and cons. Who's around during spring break? Who's going to attend this? Probably the most interested students that are definitely looking for an opportunity to sell themselves, get a job, get some practice, uh, get some feedback from people that are interviewing. And uh, we held it in, a, in our large student lounge. We call it the Whitley Lounge on one of our three campuses. It holds about three or 400 people. We didn't have that many. We cordoned off about half of it. And it turned out to be so successful that the word got out to administration. Some were walking around wondering what all these people are doing there. And so we decided that we're going to do this again. And they want to institutionalize this. Wait a minute. This was, this was Bay Tech related. We want to focus specifically on ICT. Anyhow, it was uh, from 12 to 2.30. Uh, we don't like to conduct gatherings with our advisors that we've had. I've been with the college for almost 20 years now. And we like to limit the time to an hour, hour and a half max. This is something very, very unique. And it turned out to work. They didn't get tired. And we included, uh, we included uh, three departments, computing and information technology, media technologies, engineering technology. And then we decided, uh, we, upper administration, vice presidents, they came around during the event and said, why don't you include the entire college? Now, I don't think we can do that. Let's take it one step at a time. So we included HIT because it's under the umbrella of ICT. And we included the business department. Why business department? You heard our keynote this morning talk about business information worker. I think in the year 2020, uh, he forecasted, uh, his name is Steve Wright, eight to 20,000 jobs uh, for the business information worker alone. Is there a major BIW? Anyhow, we included two additional uh, departments. So this year, we're going to have five departments instead of three. This format here, five, two, three, five minutes to sell yourself. And we told the students that two minutes to wrap up and three minutes to get to the next booth. Now, there are three video clips that I want to share with you that were relatively short that inspired me personally to take on this challenge, which I thought that if I got the right people, maybe I could head this up by myself. And uh, much to my dismay, this is not something that you do alone. It was a lot of work, but all well worth it. We wanted to have an event where students could build upon their network of individuals to learn more about the fields that they were interested in from experts in that field and be able to match these two individuals together. I've been talking to a pharmaceutical company, a TV station, a marketing firm. Note the layout of the auditorium. Tell me about what you're up to. Our studio, Ohio Global, and always keeping that fresh new talent in the pipeline. This is about connecting young professionals to the business community. This is different because it's not an actual booth where you sit there, students come in, and you drop your resume, and you get a squishy toy, and you leave. 
engage one on one actual with employers, with students, every five minutes, and then you switch. The biggest piece of advice I can give you is do your homework on the company you're interviewing with. I have gotten people that are going to give me some pointers on that to tell me what I should be doing to get a job. When you come here, unlike maybe at the career fair, it's understood up front that they're coming here in many cases for advice and that anything they ask is fair game. Anytime you're connecting with someone in the real world, it can give you a little bit more confidence about what you're getting yourself into. This was very well organized. Please go you were on the ground at the I spent two and a half to three hours out of my day today and went away with a good handful of people that I would consider for internships or management development programs. It's just a way of giving back. And so I know that if I am sharing what I've learned, that somebody, I'm hoping, uh, has been helped along the way. I think that it gets people out of their shell and, and gives them a taste for what they're heading into when they graduate. That video clip who Dimitri sent me from Baytech. I, we could do that. We could do that at CSM, College Southern Nevada. We've got uh, roughly 350 plus or minus 50 business and industry ICT partners throughout the state. And the College of Southern Nevada being the largest institution of higher education, including larger than UNR and UNLV, uh, we have got over the past 20 years many, many IT advisors. They've given us millions of dollars. So when I saw that, it inspired me personally to turn on a light bulb, the Baytech light bulb. I wonder if Deborah will support this. And she did. So we're very, very thankful about that. Lou actually flew in. And out of the three inspiring clips, here's a second one also that really, I think all of the students should watch this. University of Rhode Island, good interview versus bad interview. Hi, my name is Allie. I'm a junior at URI, and I'm an early child for major. I'm from Southern Massachusetts, and I was a camp counselor for the past five years. I also participated in the program center at URI. It was a lot of fun. I really worked well with kids, and after completing the program, I realized I can make sure those kids here. Hi, my name is Allison Sutherland, and after recently being accepted into the School of Education at the University of Ireland, I now run to that course to achieve my goal of becoming a key private teacher. Participating in the Miracle Program Jumpstart at URI, I was able to develop my leadership abilities and saw firsthand how important the learning process is in the young child's life. I was so the students that maintained the high CPA. I'm very involved on campus. I was a civic engaging leader where I had the opportunity to lead the session and volunteer projects all around the community. I was listened to my practicums in the classroom and received positive feedback from each experience. Overall, I learned fast, work hard, and was ready for any challenge. Uh, my name is Arjun Abuja. I'm at the College of Pharmacy at URI, uh, which is the University of Rhode Island. I'm also at their honors program. Um, I volunteered at my local hospital last summer, and I work at CBS, uh, hoping to get experience. So I hope I can join you. Hi, my name is Arjun Abuja, and since I'm training college pharmacy at the University of Rhode Island, I'm already becoming a licensed pharmacist. As a German student, I challenged myself to join URI's art program, and through the program, I was able to volunteer for the Habitat for Humanity in Alabama. At the site, I was able to see how easy it was to find the great impact the lives of others, and that's what I hope to accomplish as a future pharmacist. I also volunteered at my local hospital this past summer to develop my communication skills and to get more familiar with the medical environment. Lastly, I am a current student intern at CBS Pharmacy, and I see on a daily basis how important dedication and teamwork are to provide excellent service to the patient. I believe through my experience and my education, I'll be able to succeed at any position. Uh, my name is Seth Saunders. I'm a junior um, communications major at UI. I'm very interested in getting experience 
and I play soccer. So I'm good at people on a team. My name is Beth Saunders. I'm the junior communication major with a minor in business administration. I've been on the dean's list every semester for the past three years, and I've been very involved on campus. I'm a part of the city senate, and I'm also a member of the London soccer team. This last semester, I was able to do real valuable work experience by interning in the alumni relationship, where I was able to work on event planning and different marketing tasks. I really feel like my internship, coupled with my experience on the soccer team, was making a real valuable asset to your team. Now, regardless of their major, the, the second time around, uh, what a dramatic difference in their people skills. I, I, I would hire all three of those students if I just watched this video clip of these students. Totally responsible people. And that image of professionalism, preparedness, it's all there. Um, and I suspect that their resume, the handshake, the eye contact that you mentioned earlier. Um, Eddie Lynn just gave a presentation in a prior uh, workshop about the importance of a one-page resume. Uh, if it's two pages, use the whole thing, I think. But one page, when he's got to review thousands of these things, I learned something out of that. What to say, what not to say, what to include, what not to include, and the cover letter if you're going to have one at all. So all of that is part of getting your students prepared to land that job. And the third video clip that inspired me, I'm not going to show all of this, but you're probably familiar with our colleagues here, Elaine Haight. Uh, I believe she's here at the conference. Jane Ostrander, I'm not sure if she's here today. Uh, Ron Freed and Louise Yarnell. And I won't show this entire clip, but uh, through the NSF funding, they created this video clip, which I saw at a, in a workshop at MPIC last winter. And I really liked what I saw because it speaks volumes on what we're seeing across the United States. And I'll show just a few minutes of this. Recognize this and being brilliant in the subject matter all by itself is, is just not good enough nowadays. I would guess 50% of engineering effort is based on because of poor communication. To me, it's that is efficient. You look for the basic programming skills and coding skills, which is, which is needed for all engineers. But I think one of the distinguishing factors that, that we look for in someone who can be fit in Google is really communication skills and working in a team or team working skills. So when I'm interviewing a candidate, I always give them a problem to solve before. But I try to make it clear to them that most of the importance I'm placing on uh, how they describe what they're doing and their thought process step by step so they can break down their thought process completely and expose it to me if I did. Well, it's written down in paper is what gets you through the interview. This communication skills that how you take the job. We hire when we interview students for opportunities. Um, we certainly find that soft skills are extremely important for a technical position. So the telltale of signs for someone having strong communication skills in an interview, for me at least, is really observing how they tackle even simple problems. Um, I'll give you a classic example. So I give someone a problem saying, here's an algorithm you need to write code on the board. Um, nine out of ten folks might you know, get the answer right or might get it wrong, but you'll find a few of those people actually taking the time out to explicitly state what they're going to do and how they're going to do it. So sort of verbalizing the approach before they start. Um, at that point, they kind of pause and ask for feedback, saying, this is what I'm thinking. Does that make sense? And should I go ahead with it? Here are the pros, here are the cons. Um, these are obvious delicate signs of the person is not just thinking aloud, but really asking for feedback and using that feedback as part of his as part of his output. Communication is the only way um, to to work if you want to get promoted. He's going to 
people looking for around them on their own because that person down there they they don't communicate well, but I know they're brilliant. You know, that that just doesn't happen. The concept of collaboration at Google is is given a lot of importance, especially in the engineering um, a lot of people don't know this, but the reason one of the goals that Larry and Sergey had when they brought up three lunches at Google was really that employees from different parts of the company would come and sit down and work at lunch. And hopefully meet someone they hadn't met before. And within the half an hour, 45 minute lunch, talk about all the great ideas they had in their minds, and hopefully one of them um, blooms or blossoms into a full fledged project. In fact, many projects have one at the uh, in a team engineering situation, you have to make sure that people understand what you're doing, why you're doing it. Eddie, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, I thought I recognized one of the girls in that. <laughs> yeah, a lot of this is kind of right up your alley, and I just was so happy to see the importance of presentation on the importance of your students' resumes because we provide that in this professional development here. Oh yeah, to real yeah, I like this. Oh, yeah. So that, I, I thought that you might appreciate that video clip there. I mean, it, you, you, we can't overemphasize to our students the importance of investigating the, the, the actual company that you're targeting. If you go to work for Google and you're dressed, I know that Zappos.com, uh, which is based in Las Vegas, uh, uh, you don't go in for an interview. They make that very, very clear uh, as much as they can a tour of Zappos, you, they won't let you wear a tie in there. Um, I suspect if you're going into the engineering department for this Google engineering manager, you better be cautious about uh, what you're wearing. And certainly uh, looking at a video clip like that, which again I would encourage all of you to show your students, that they may raise some questions that are testing, they will raise some questions that are testing your ability to think, to communicate, critical thinking. Uh, a typical interview question that one of our business and industry partners asked is, uh, if you could be anybody in the entire world, who would that person be and why? And so be prepared, tell your students to be prepared for what may seem far-fetched, but the objective is to uh, find out if you're able to critically think. Are you creative? Can you effectively communicate? What is your vocabulary like? What is your eye contact or lack of eye contact? In some countries, if you make direct eye contact, you're likely to get killed. I think that there's something to be said about cultural knowledge as well. So you're being assessed uh, in, in a lot of ways. Uh, all three of those, IBM, Google, and Apple, uh, these are the, the three or four soft skills that seem to overlap on these independent uh, uh, interviews there. And I have links to all of these if you're interested. Uh, I've got my business card here. Uh, the results from our uh, spring uh, speed networking event, we had 38 student participants, 35 employers <laughs> from 25 companies. Uh, these are just a segment of that huge ICT advisory committee that we've got statewide. National Securities Technology, formerly Bechtel, Nevada. Uh, Department of Energy, Department of Defense. We've got NB Energy. I suspect that's uh, equivalent to your Southwest Gas here in uh, California. Federal Aviation Administration, uh, Intel, HP, Dell Computer Link Technologies, City of North, North Las Vegas, Las Vegas, and many, many more. Uh, so we had a very, very successful turnout. Uh, that strong relationship that we have, we call it the TIVA Committee, Technology Education Business Alliance. Uh, we can call these people that we've had strong partnerships for many, many years and quite literally, in most cases, 100% of the time when we make a call, they will be there. And so we're very, very fortunate and I've heard contrary to that in many other NSF uh, centers and projects is that they don't have that business and industry connection there. So we're very, very grateful for that and out of that comes uh, uh, speed networking and many, many other opportunities. This one in particular is one of the greatest um, opportunities that we jumped on and it turned out to be surprisingly successful to the extent that the administrators that happened to be floating around during spring break 
caught wind of it, came down and watched what was going on and, and enjoyed it so much. Why aren't you doing this and why aren't you doing that? So it was a trial run and it turned out to be very, very successful. We conducted nine two-hour professional development workshops that included faculty, staff, including student affairs. Turns out they have a professional development student certification that turns out to be something like uh, close to 40 hours over the course of the semester. Everything from dinner etiquette to the handshake to eye contact to resume writing. And we kind of scaled that down to two-hour workshop. The two-hour workshop included the three video clips that I just showed you. Uh, invite phone calls were made uh, to our NSF Technology Education Business Alliance members, Society of Information Management <coughs> members. We made email blasts to uh, uh, our NSF partners, SIM partners, Chamber of Commerce, Latino Chamber of Commerce, the Asian Chamber of Commerce, uh, Las Vegas Chamber of Commerce. These are thousands and thousands of email blasts. Uh, Dimitri helped us out on that, Deborah. And we're very grateful for that. But one of the things that I've learned over the past 20 years is unless you make that phone call, follow up that email invite, it's not going to get read. And sure enough, we must have sent out five to 10,000 emails. Not one responded. It was a phone call. And it was a connection that we had already made. And can you bring somebody to this speed networking event? Here's the information. Here's the date. Here's what's going to be expected of you. And they've never done this before. None of them have ever been involved with a speed networking event. So very, very unique. And they all thoroughly enjoyed it. And there were follow-up student surveys uh, that were completed uh, for, uh, both by the student and the employer. Uh, all of the information is available. Some of the student qualifications, uh, uh, they had to be a student from uh, some of these departments here, computing and information technology. These are some of the degrees that we offer at the college in the Southern Nevada. Network security, administration, service and support, computer forensics. So they had to be a CIT major, uh, must be a media technology major in computer graphics or web design. Uh, we also included engineering technology, either electronics, or telecom, you might ask why electronics. Those are huge donors and partners also looking for uh, students that need experience both part-time, full-time as an intern. So engineering technology students were included. You, you might ask yourself, well, what does that have to do with ICT? Well, that's in part that big part of telecommunications industry. And it's not just the hardware. It's everything from packet switching fiber optics, telephony, microwave, that's all part of engineering technology which falls under the umbrella of ICT. We scaled this down, uh, Deborah, from I think you had a 2.8 or something like that. We have a different culture in Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are in the 90-something percentile. We're, in the, we're, we're often either the 49th or 50th ranked state in the worst educational statistics in the United States. Uh, highest dropout rates, worst retention rate, worst high school graduate, and so on and so forth. But we're continually trying to make improvements. So we had to lower their GPA. A completion of English, the first semester English class, must have completed the two-hour workshop, which we covered the soft skills, we covered the video clips, we covered resume writing. We covered the eye contact, the handshake, cultural differences, and how to read the person. We covered elevator speeches and so forth. And you must have a completed resume, which we helped out during that two-hour. Sample resumes like you did, Eddie. We gave out about a half a dozen of those, good ones versus bad ones, and explained why. Kind of like you did, but not in as much depth and detail. And so very valuable stuff that you gave in your workshop. Uh, we had uh, Baytech, uh, one of their executive directors, fly in and help us with uh, the last workshop. And I think that was observation as well. What is it that you're doing in the student preparedness for the speed networking? And I think uh, Lou Piazza was quite impressed. Uh, and he also came to attend the speed networking event, as well as Dimitri. And I think he was pleased with what he saw. <clears throat> Be aware of the details if you plan on doing this. 
uh, just that Michigan State University video clip alone uh, is this is fantastic. We can do this. But you don't stop and think of facilities requests that needs to be made out, table placement, maps, posters, flyers. Are you going to provide snacks and beverage? Uh, applications. Uh, who's signing up for which workshop and what time? There were nine workshops that we conducted. Who's conducting the workshop? Are you are you able to find people to help you conduct the workshop? What is the content of the workshops? And are you going to make sure that you're all on the same page? And who are the people that attend? The sign-in sheets. Uh, have them bring their resumes. There's a lot of detail. Even the clock, the digital clock that you saw, might have saw on the speed networking, that's counting down from five minutes. Somebody rings the bell. Time to clean house. Wrap it up. You've got two minutes to get to your next station. All of that, the podium, the mic, uh, needs to be accounted for. Flyers that were posted all over the place, the classrooms to get students to participate, what is the criteria, who do you talk to, who are the contact persons. Oops. <laughs> Other details, countdown timer. We had a student worker uh, write a program to serve as a projected projected timer. Where are you going to put that timer so that everybody can see it? It was one of the problems that we had. Is not everybody when they were doing the speed networking interview, their mind was totally somewhere else. So we had to grab that mic and let them know you've got one minute left in the five minutes you have to sell yourself. Two minutes to wrap up in one ear and out the other with I'd say about twenty percent. Unless you've got a strong voice commanding voice and you're grabbing their attention, they're not looking at that clock. But it is helpful to have that up there for most of us that are coordinating the event. Table tents, we color coded all of the tables with those majors, networking, service and support, uh, forensics, computer forensics, computer graphics. Every table was color coded so that the student and the employer knew which table to go to if they were interested in Hewlett Packard, and the energy, national security technology, they knew where to stand for their next interview. Name badges, employer sign in sheets. Lou helped out on that. It was just amazing that he came at the right time. The line was getting a little bit too long, but all the little details here, and I'm sharing this with you because I'm encouraging you to maybe do the same. This is a great opportunity to focus all of the things that we've talked about into one exciting, very, very constructive and beneficial event that's going to connect those students for internships, part-time and full-time jobs. Here's a picture. Now, compare this and contrast it with that Michigan State University. When all was said and done and, and the, the event actually took place. I was telling Lou, Lou, we, we not only duplicated at a community college what Michigan State was doing, but I thought that we did an equally, I wish I, wish I was video recording this, or I could share with you what we video recorded. You would see that we, we duplicated. And that was a vision to begin with among many of us. And it turned out to be very, very successful. I don't know how many business and industry partners you have, but this is, this is certainly doable on a larger scale or a smaller scale. And so you can see the, the clock there. That's visible to all of us that we're helping out, escorting the students to the appropriate uh, uh, ICT segment, uh, escorting the students to the station. And for business and industry people, and students that were facing that, be aware of that clock, no matter how many times you reminded them. Uh, they are so focused on that that one-on-one -on -one interview that they, they, they had to be reminded by loud blasts from the microphone. Speaking of which, we're at 10 minutes. 
forecasted areas of improvement, well, there's always room for improvement. So reflecting back, uh, people were asking me, why didn't you invite our president to, to see what you had here? Well, if we invited him to begin with, it could have been catastrophic. <laughs> and so it was considered, considered a pilot. Public relations is the furthest thing from our mind. But when you have something like this uh, that turns out to be that successful and you get these these partners, longtime partners, engaged in the way that we all saw them engaged. Uh, yeah, why wasn't there public relations there? And so we'll do that this year during spring break when we host the event again and include our business department and our HIT folks from the health science uh, school. Timer needs to be more visitor, visible. There's five minutes to sell yourself, two minutes to wrap up, three minutes to get to your next location, uh, we need a louder bell or something. Somebody a little bit more commanding with their voice. Other minor stuff here but needs to be taken into account. Registration, sign-in sheets, promoting on uh, social media, and getting a broader uh, announcement of the actual event. I mean, when they heard about the speed networking, I think a lot of students, younger students especially, have seen television shows or video clips on speed dating. So they're going to make the connection immediately. I'd love to do that. Now the way we're selling this is is not only jobs and internship opportunities, full and part time, but this is a golden opportunity. The second a major objective is to, to, to get some practice in. Practice interviewing. Get some feedback on that resume that you showed us, Eddie, that, that here are some pros and cons, and you got feedback from some of us. You wasted space here. Terrible grammar here. Uh, lack of definition. Uh, all of those things that if you go back and look at Eddie Lynn's presentation, you'll see a lot of tips there, many of which we'll share for this next event that's coming up. Student professional development workshop, interview skills, soft skills, we covered the resume as well, good resume versus bad. What is an elevator pitch? How are you going to sell yourself in five minutes? Especially if you don't know what questions they're going to be asking in that five minutes. So we inform the employers also. <coughs> Professional attire, what is your know? If you're going to conduct a speed networking event, you're going to need some major contact people that are going to step up to bat. Department chairs, program directors, and we're all up against the naysayers, but it worked. It worked for us, and I'm sure that it'll work for you. You just need to have that individual or individuals that are willing to take charge. You have them in every department uh, under the umbrella of CIT. Those are the people that you're going to target, including those that will conduct the student professional development work. All that material we have available for you. And this is what we plan on doing the next time. I wanted to share with you some of them photos and then we'll, I got six minutes. <laughs> I think it's just not here. Mm -hmm. <coughs> this is the Whitley Lounge beforehand. Well, that's, that's one third of the Whitley Lounge. <coughs> Here's some of our sign-in sheets. There's Lou Piazza, uh, Baytech uh, Executive Director. Uh, he helped out at the last minute. And we, I can't thank Lou enough for We had long lines there. And here's some of our business and industry partners, student workers, students in the back getting prepared, sign-in sheets, notice the posters there. You try to be as much as you can uh, savvy on what you're going to post on these posters, uh, taking into account gender, ethnicity, all of that is part of the, what needs to be taken into account. There's Dimitri there from Baytech. Tremendous help. See the students beforehand, they're getting quite nervous. <laughs> Here's a timer here. Didn't come out too good on the photograph, but uh, that was always taking place. Dean Spangler, uh, thanking and welcoming uh, 
uh, both the students and the faculty and staff that participated. <coughs> And we had snacks on the site as well. And this next time around, during spring break, we'll reserve about 30 minutes for uh, our business and industry partners to take a break as well. Any questions? So I would like to make one comment. Because, okay. um, so we've talked to some of the people before this event and after this event. Kiva Technology Education Business Alliance. Um, and so, the thing that was very striking was that a lot of these people said, oh, we've engaged with CSN for many years. But we had never really gotten that close and connected with a lot of the students until then and really gained an appreciation <coughs> for the education that they were getting and the skills that they had developed. And it was really interesting to see some of that transition with some of these business partners, even though they had been active you know, either with um, funding or advice or all sorts of other things, they had actually not necessarily connected at that level. And so it was really an interesting conversation with them after the event. Um, and so I just wanted to put that in. Thanks, Sarah. That, that, that's so true. And, and personally, myself, and I think my colleagues saw it as well, the feedback that we got from the students, but especially as they were mentioned, the employers, uh, that level of engagement, uh, that solidifies the partnership even further. It sustains it, and it allows us to get on the phone and call them to continue their advice as subject matter experts, adjunct instructors. They can, they can be part of technology colloquiums. They're donors. Somebody asked me to write a letter to ask for a million dollars, and and within a week, they wrote a check for 50000 not a whole lot, but I asked Belly Gaming, for example, a huge part of IT, uh, for we need to raise $2 million. Within 15 minutes, we got the assurance that we were going to get $385,000 cash. Then next year, it was a half a million dollars. This is cash. And so I would call some of our other partners that I golf with, hey, so-and-so gave us three hundred. Can you guys match that? 385000 So Bally Gaming, um, and we do everything from RFID with them to player tracking cards to networking to fiber optics. They hire our students. They didn't come up with $385,000. But, but we, because we have that strong rapport with them, they, they donated $40,000. And so we've gotten millions of dollars of equipment, materials, subject matter expertise, participation, soft skills uh, workshops, content and context that we've been conducting around the United States for the past uh, couple of years. Ago. We get on the phone and call them. They're always there to give us feedback on our faculty who ourselves we need soft skills training. So they're always there to help out. This was probably the biggest event in my 20 years uh, at the College of Southern Nevada that I really felt things came together where you can really see the beauty of business and industry partners.